I think open access publishing is uh, an excellent medium for uh, scientists and uh, doctors and surgeons to progress the academic requirements of their field. And I think it's an essential component in the advancement of uh, medical science. I think it works very well, and it's a good medium of getting papers uh, published and also disseminating science. In my role as a researcher, I see my, uh, my goal is to generate new knowledge and for that knowledge to be disseminated for the global good. And the current model of publication and dissemination is an absurd one. So as a researcher, I, I generate hypotheses, I secure grant funds, I lead a research team, I do the work, I uh, write papers, uh, they're submitted to journals, and the journals do the peer review process and the production. But from then on, uh, that information is not within my control. I've handed it over to the journal, and they decide who has access to that information, uh, who can, uh, so people who want to read it will have to subscribe to that journal, pay money, and that essentially restricts the dissemination of knowledge, which is absurd. So open access removes that barrier, allows my work to be freely available to whoever wants to read it, and it allows me to reuse information and to add to that information uh, and use it however I want. So I see that as a major advantage. I think open access is a, is a major uh, 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 advance. I mean, A, I can access my own articles. B, people around the world, wherever they are, can access those journals. And that's a huge step forward. For the last 15 years, I have had projects all over the world, especially in Africa, in Asia, and also in South America. Some of these countries have a huge amount of resources, but they are low income. And for my students there, for my project there, open access means everything. It means that they can do research. They have no access to journals. So, so when we do research there, they go into PubMed, they go into internet and find the open access journals. That's the only way they can get to know what's happening in the world in their area. I have published around 54 research papers from Africa, and they are all in open access. Otherwise, it's not available for the others. So for me, I cannot do research abroad and other places if we don't have an open access journal. So as a, as a researcher, I'm often traveling abroad, and it's, it strikes me as utterly ludicrous that if I'm in South Africa, for example, and I want to access my newly published research in certain journals, I can't actually access my own paper that I've done all the work for, uh, because the institution where I'm uh, working at that time doesn't have uh, the, the subscription to the journal. So I, I see this, uh, the journal subscription process as a barrier to knowledge dissemination, which means that my work uh, won't have the impact, uh, particularly my, my work uh, relates to HIV and tuberculosis, which are major problems in developing countries. And uh, researchers there won't be able to access my information, uh, access the research that I've done, and so that limits progress. And it, uh, the subscription journal system of publication actually uh, is, a, is, a, is a barrier to scientific progress. Actually, my experience with open access journal is in parallel uh, of being um, an editor in regular journals. And I have to say that my experience was fantastic because it increased uh, significantly the visibility of the paper that we have published. When I refer to papers, actually we had an issue in the open access journal in the BMC medicine. And um, the uh, feedback that we received was dramatic. First of all, the number of people responding to the papers, because it was easy to access the papers. And moreover, we got questions from countries in which usually you do not get questions and reactions countries which could not afford, or uh, citizens of countries which could not afford uh, to buy reprints and to access journals which ask to pay for uh, downloading the PDFs. My, these articles that I've published with, uh, within open access journals, they were very visible. I had a lot of feedback from, from peers, from, from other colleagues, um, and still to this day um, I get emails I get uh, regular emails of people asking me about uh, 
for example, protocols that we have described in this paper, so they, they certainly get accessed much more often than, than uh, articles published in, in traditional subscription journals. And uh, most of these articles were also covered in, in uh, press releases or by the, by the media. Uh, and I feel that it's much more easy, it's much easier for these, uh, for journalists to get access to these, uh, to these articles. In my field of uh, sports surgery, uh, uh, I believe that a lot of the patients need to be very familiar with what procedures they're adopting. And the fact that patients themselves can gain access to the medical knowledge uh, quite easily over the internet is, is vital. And they themselves can read about the procedures, they can read about the, uh, the outcomes, and they can come to you more prepared and with directed questions specifically for what their, their problem is. My belief is that in the future, actually, all the papers will become, or all the journals will become open access, because it's a natural process which nobody will be able to resist um, to enable the readers to access the journals and not the authors. I think open access publishers need, need to um, really make sure that the reputation of this movement doesn't get uh, doesn't get destroyed by uh, the perception that some people have that basically authors can pay for publication and they can get anything published. So it's it's very important, I think, that um, that we really keep very very high standards, as Biomed Central certainly does, especially BMC Medicine. The same is true for PLOS. One of the hurdles is the payment for. Uh, the, the, the publication process. And I think we're in a, a transition phase whereby the models by which publications are funded is evolving. I've been fortunate in being funded by the Wellcome Trust and they have supplied funds so that all my research can be paid for to be produced. But other people who aren't re uh, funded by such researchers or have such mechanisms, it is a hurdle. But I think that we need to find funding mechanisms which enable the work that is being done to be made freely accessible for the global good.